Your imagination may be ruining your life, and it may be the only tool you've got that's going to fix it. Check out how I used it in my favor after the doctor gave me the diagnosis. Welcome to No Bow Tie, where we conquer emptiness and frustration, discover our uniqueness, and live with unrelenting joy. I'm John No Bow Tie Swoboda, musician and author. I had an event eight years ago, went to the doctor, everything was fine. The doctor said, Hey, what's that going on in your leg there? And I said, I don't know. It's, you know, just a spot. She said, well, you know what? Let's just do a biopsy of it to make sure. So, okay. Well, the doctor's always, you know, the one to decide. I got a phone call three days later. She said, are you sitting down? So, okay. Uh, I am. Why? She said, well, you have cancer. You have severe cancer on one leg, and the sample that we took from the other leg shows that you have melanoma on the other leg. And she said, well, it is just skin cancer. We have a serious problem here. We need to get that off, and we need to get all of it. When I hung up that phone, my imagination was flying in both the good and the bad. What's going to happen to me? Where is this headed? Oh my God, am I going to have to get treatment? Is this going to go into other parts of my body? And I really was a wreck. And I hadn't even known what was going to happen yet. My imagination was controlling my life. And that night, I had to tell my wife what was going on. I asked her, I said, can we go for a walk? I have something I want to talk to you about. And when we did, something transformed in me that I very quickly told her what was going on. And, but after that, I was overwhelmed with an imagination of the other side of why am I here? What, what, why am I living? How, how can I control my life from this point on to live the life that I want to live if something should go bad? And it was very uplifting. And all of a sudden, things started to kick in of the, of the most important things I wanted to do with my life, which had to do with interacting with other people to pull their potential forward on things that they were holding back on. It had nothing to do with that. I wanted to play the lottery or I wanted to, you know, take a risk and something or bucket list items. I just wanted to get more involved with what I was about and start taking action on it instead of procrastinating it. All triggered by my imagination. The next thing I knew, I had started on it and now finally have finalized and written a book based on that one event. I've got these podcasts out supporting it. I've recorded four albums since that day because I knew, I knew that my imagination could serve me well. And as long as I used it that way, that I was in the better line of thinking, in the better line of creating my life. How about you? Right now, this morning, when you woke up, what kind of day did you see? What kind of imagination are you serving to make your life the way that your imagination is going to drive you to be? Are you controlling it? Are you letting it control you? Your imagination is the diagnosis. If you have a good imagination, or meaning a positive imagination, you hear the possibility of something, you say, oh, cool, that'll be great. And already the creative juices start to flow to create that kind of a moment, that kind of an event that you want to see play out. But if your imagination tends toward the negative, unfortunately, the same thing happens. And in your mind, you start already creating the response. You say, oh, no. I'll bet I know what's going to happen. I have a friend whose father passed away, and while waiting for the to to plan the visitation or the uh, the celebration of life, she knew that things were going to go bad because the two sides of the family were very politically separate, and she she could just see it that one group was going to sit on one side, one group was going to sit on the other. They weren't going to talk to each other. And she was going to be the pivotal moment. She even planned a certain amount of time to go from side to side in the room, making sure that she greeted everybody. The day came, and how often does this happen to you? 
that the opposite plays out compared to your imagination. And you're just caught off guard. And it reboots what you think to think. She showed up that day and the two families were already talking. They were hugging. They were smiling. They were shaking hands. They were greeting each other, remembering names and talking about very positive memories of her dad who had passed away. And in the end, she just sat in awe of how wrong her thoughts were that built up this other emotion that she was carrying into the place. She was actually carrying in this baggage on her own back and ready to play it out. And you know, how often does this happen in your life? that you, th you, you think something's going to happen, so you already create your response to it. And if it's a negative thing, you create a negative response, a defense, because you know it's going to happen. And the fact is, you don't, but perhaps you're already creating that event. Because e either way, you're using it in your life to respond to events. We do this unknowingly. This is a big role of the subconscious mind, the response that we have to things. I have a friend that uh, when she was 32 years old, she found out she was pregnant. And her first response was, oh no. Oh my God, I can't handle this. I cannot raise a child. I was not raised to know how. My mom and dad didn't raise me well, and I have fought those demons all of my life. My mom was self-absorbed. My dad didn't care. I won't know how to do this. My values have been just decomposed over the years, and I've had so many hard times just because of the way they raised me. I don't want to pass that on to a child. She went, wait a minute. I don't want to pass that on to a child. And her imagination drove the other way. And she decided then that she was going to give this child the best life possible. She was going to work hard at a job in order to provide for this child the things that she did not have. And the more she thought this way, the more her imagination just kicked in and fulfilled all of the possibilities she could give this child. And since then, she has. She has given this child and another a, a great opportunity at education lessons that involve their talents, how to, uh, long talks about how to deal with love, how to deal with disagreement, how to deal with friends, how, how to respond to life. And great relationships, they travel together, exposing these kids to everything that she did not have as a child, especially the biggest one that, that served her well was she kicked in and spent time with these kids in ways that she didn't have. And while you can say that, you know, it was driven by desire or avoidance or fear, whatever it is, it was the imagination that was triggered to create that future. Imagine for a moment had she not done that. Imagine that she, like you might do, just went on autopilot, or I should say auto defense, where you respond in the way that you've been taught to respond instead of the best way that your imagination can think up. And isn't imagination the greatest gift from God for forming your life? How else are you going to do it? Use somebody else's? A lot of people do. Speaking of vision, one of mine is coming true. This May, I'm going to be releasing an audio book of my first book, How to Be Unique, just like everybody else. Look for that in May. And in the meantime, go to patreon.com slash nobowtie and look for exclusive offers and deals on not only that book, but other products and ways to support quality material on, in your life. And let's get back to more stories about how to sustain happiness. Now, I know it's common that we go through life and we believe that we just can't control it. We can't control what we're thinking. If that's you, here is the solution. When it starts, and, and remember, you can build this like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the better you will get at this. And you can master it. You can get control of the way that your mind is creating your life. The first thing that you need to do is when you notice you're having 
ill-gotten thoughts, if you're going that negative direction, to stop and think about how realistic that really is. If it hasn't happened, why is it realistic? You're going to make it that way. So stop and reshape that thought. Sometimes it's okay to just say, I really don't know what's going to happen, but let me go ahead and feed the best possibility. And this can mean, like, say you're showing up for a family event, and before you go in, for some reason, you have tension built up in you about it, and you're not looking forward to it. Your imagination at that point can catch the thoughts that you're having about interaction with a certain somebody or a, you know, an argument you might have had at one time. And picture the resolve. Picture being loving. Picture being inviting. And if they don't respond to that, that's their imagination. That's their problem. But you control your life with yours. Isn't it time? Now, catching your thinking is the, the first one. But as I already mentioned, shaping your thinking, shaping your thinking is the skill that you want to get on top of. Because the more you can do this, the more you're going to be your own hero. When you catch the thinking and you realize that sometimes it's distorted, yes, it is. <laughs> None of us know the future. That you realize sometimes you have distorted thinking to protect yourself, to, to, you know, to prepare you for what might happen. And you get used to turning that around. Those muscles of positive imagination are just as effective, even more effective, because it causes the domino effect that you need in your life to become the person that you want to be. That domino effect is what makes people want to be around you. It's what gives you a magnetic charisma when you walk into a room. It makes it so that people want to hear your opinion because you, be you become better at listening because you want that imagination to, to mill about. You become better at listening so that you can provide a positive reaction and plant a vision with other people's imaginations. Imagine the world you would live in if that's what you did every day. Your world, your personal world, would be the one that you do want to have, the one that you do want to live in every day. And it becomes a game that you can play and win time in and time out. I'm really excited about next week's episode. So let's stop here. Next week, we're going to take this a step further. We're going to reboot it and send it up with great imagination. It's going to be all about the control that you wish you had. So be sure to check in. Subscribe to the channel at nobowtie.com slash life. Get on the newsletter. And we always appreciate your support. So have a great week. I'm going to leave you with a music musical event um, one that was once the imagination of Francisco Tarrega, a, a piece called Capriccio Arabe. See you next week. This is a piece written by Francisco Tarrega, and this is the original classical version.